Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital. I'm back with another video here. It's been a little bit. And in this video, I wanna kind of go over some of the use cases for the note grid. Now we, we've already gone into the realm of uh, the beta of 4.3, and I'll probably hopefully um, do some videos on that soon, but I want to talk a little bit about the note grid and hopefully give you a perspective that you may not have had before or are not in other videos on the subject. So I think that the note grid does some things in Bitwig that um, you can't really do in any other DAW when you're using it properly. And I think one of the best use cases, besides just making huge elaborate, you know, note effect conglomerations, is really powerful making very simple, very straightforward tools that you can use during mixing. And um, because of the way Bitwig, Bitwig, Bitwig works, it allows you just to bring in one of these grid, note grid effects and do some things that you can't really do in any other DAW. So let me show you some of that stuff. And um, the thing about the note grid is that with the normal grid, when you're using oscillators and filters and stuff, you're dealing with audio. And audio is kind of forgiving. If you push it through a shaper, you push it through whatever, you're gonna probably get some result and you're still gonna hear something. But with the note grid, it's kind of like you're dealing more with data and you're using signals to generate data. So it's not as forgiving. So it, it's not as easy to kind of just experiment and get something usable, if that makes sense. So it's, it's maybe not quite as immediate and fun as using the poly grid um, or the effects grid. But um, if you're doing mixing and you just kind of throw something, if you have an idea, you can probably throw it together pretty quickly and easily and get some awesome results. So for instance, um, what if I wanted to, I have this normal kind of FM tine sort of sound what if I want it to pan from left to right according to which note I'm playing on on the on the in a chord or something like that? Can I do that? Yes, and it's pretty easy to do. I'm gonna just call up one where um, I've already done this called chord pan, and we can see it's a pretty simple setup here. And basically, all you have to do is, um, in here, I'm using a key tracker, and I'm basically using that to generate a signal so that each note is able to have its own pan position. So when I use it, you can hear each note has its own pan, let me make it even more drastic. And then when I turn it off, it's very flat. So it's very easy to hear the difference there, I think. I'm gonna turn it off. It's like flat. I really like the pan version a lot better. It fills up the mix a lot better. So this is what, where this is gonna be really powerful in a mix when you can just drag and drop it and hear how it sounds in the context of a mix panned like that. And this is also not just gonna pan maybe like from the lowest key on the keyboard to the highest. It's going to pan centered on the chord. So even if I'm playing a lower chord, it's still gonna pan the same as a, an upper chord. So that's a unique thing that is really hard to do otherwise. Now, of course, this is pretty easy to do, especially in um, Bitwig, if you're just using the key tracking um, within the synthesizer, you could do something similar. But with the note grid, you can do this as, as a plugin or as, a, as an effect um, and just drop it on the in front of any synthesizer. But it has to be a Bitwig synthesizer, unfortunately, because other synthesizers will not respond to that sort of pan information. Um, it is possible to do it with maybe some other ones if you program it properly, if they support like MPE or something like that. But it will work with any Bitwig instrument. And uh, so 
It's pretty, pretty awesome, I think. And that's one use case. So another thing we can do kind of drag and drop with Bitwig devices is do like an instant unison. And I have one already baked here. Um, let's go into note effects again. And here we go, unison. So this one is pretty straightforward. If it's not on, it's normal, turn it on. I've had a little bit of a buggy thing going on, and this is the beta, so there might be something in that. But yeah, all things being equal, it should work pretty flawlessly. Now you do have to account for a few things. Number one is that um, you have to have steel same key turned off because the way this is working is it's generating multiple keys or multiple notes of the same key uh, at slightly different pitches. And that's how it does the unison. And I can use this little dial here to increase or decrease the amount of detuning. And um, so it's panned across the spectrum and everything, everything's all ready to go. So just to be able to drag and drop and get some unison on an instrument is pretty sweet, I think. Also, you have to uh, know that it's going to take up a lot more polyphony on your synthesizer. So you might have to open up the polyphony there to get it to work properly. And, you know, of course, you might be generating a lot more gain. So you might need to gain stage a little bit, which can be a little bit of a bummer. Like you're trying to get it to, um, you know, just be drag and drop. But you can do things in here, like just turn down the, the gain of each note, stuff like that. And... But you see how simple this is, right? It's, it's, it's literally just two different um, modules, one to change the pan, one to change the pitch, and the rest of it is simply uh, voice stacking. <laughs> I'm using the voice stacking here to split up and make multiple copies of each note. So I'm using all five notes and changing the, the, the panning the pitch um, across each note. So you can see here, I've got the transpose going on and then I can change the amount of the transpose with this dial. And here you can see that I'm changing uh, the pan position here by plugging this value into there. So it's super simple, super straightforward and quick and easy unison. I don't have to go into my synth and tune each one. I can just drop this thing on any thing I want. Oh yeah, and I also changed the channel of each stack so that there's no interference on each channel. So changing the channel does help it to run more smoothly and more consistently, I've found. And of course, then I can even, I could do more things to change the way each um, kind of unison iteration behaves. Um, if, if there is some sort of pressure sensitivity in this patch or any sort of um, timbre um, programmed in. I can also modulate those things. So very powerful and quick and easy to use and pretty easy. So I could, I could just piece this thing together pretty quickly in the middle of a mix without breaking stride too much when I have an idea of what I want to do. Um, so yeah, very powerful. Let's uh, go ahead and look at another thing we can do here. So another cool thing is that you can make a, like a per note kind of EQ thing. <laughs> so I built one here and let's see how it works. I'm gonna play this little sequence here. And uh, what this does is it allows me to decrease or increase certain notes along a certain range. So let's deal with the middle range here. I'm gonna turn it down. So you can hear I'm taking out some of those middle notes. So if I needed to like decrease the volume of certain notes, I can adjust the width of how, um, how much information I'm taking out. Um, 
It makes it kind of easy to take out maybe some bass notes if I had some bass notes. Let me load in a different um, MIDI sequence here with some different notes in it. So maybe I want to take out completely the bass notes. Can do that pretty easy. This like brick wall function here will just take out things at a note's precision. I can widen it out. So if I just want to increase the bass notes volume, I can do that too. Let's decrease the high end stuff there. So, anyway, you can get a pretty broad range of iterations of th this one kind of MIDI line by just changing the volumes of, th of the different notes. Um, and I can get precise enough that if maybe there's one note I want to kind of uh, fade out, I can kind of uh, get in real tight on a certain note. And if it's if one note in particular is really kind of too loud or something, I can adjust it or just get one to really sing out for me. So anyway, I, uh, there's a lot of good use cases. And again, this is kind of like a mixing tool that I can go in and kind of tweak these things. And instead of doing it by frequency, I can actually do it by note, which is going to give me a different result. And that, in some cases, may be a better way to mix than using an EQ, a normal EQ, um, because you're not going to take away any information from the other notes in the chord. You're just getting, you're just maybe reducing the volume of a few of them uh, while while not kind of taking the the mid range chunk out of the other notes, and that may help the the what you're um, playing to cut through the mix better or just sound better or sound more balanced or whatever. So the, this is a whole new dimension of mixing that is not available, I don't think, in any other DAW. If you want to get a quick idea of what I did to make this, um. It's not, you, you can look at it, it's not really that super complicated. Uh, it's just uh, using the curves here. And I have this brick wall that just uh, filters out at a, at a note, like there's no curve. Or we can do like curves that allow you to, um, you know, kind of turn up a certain range and make it like a hump, basically, so that it, it gets softer uh softer attenuation or or amplification um as you move away from the center point just like an eq does basically and uh yeah so it's pretty pretty you know it's, it's not that hard it's not that many modules here but in any case i'm gonna like kind of fix these up and put them on my patreon for anyone who is interested so that'll be uh fun and uh, if you guys want to know more about and programming some of these tools, uh, let me know in the comments and, and I can go over it in more detail. Um, so anyway, that's like three good examples of how you can use the note grid in the context of mixing and do some things that you can't really do in any other DAW as far as I know of. Um, they're pretty easy to build as well. And once you get kind of the feel for how to think about processing note data, it um, you could probably think of a bunch more use cases that allow you to do some pretty cool and pretty interesting uh, mixing things. So anyway, uh, that's what I have for you for today. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Um, and thank you to all you guys for watching my videos. And be sure to subscribe and leave a like if you like this content. Um, just 
having a lot of other things going on. I haven't been making as much content as I had uh, hoped to, but um, if you guys uh, find this stuff useful, then, you know, definitely let me know and, and support the channel and um, I will try to put more stuff out there. But thanks again for sticking with me and have a wonderful day. Bye.